In this video, I want to talk about the connection between magnesium deficiency and chronic fatigue. As you will see, magnesium plays a huge role in energy production, and practically every chronic fatigue case I have seen showed signs of magnesium deficiency, even when the blood levels were normal. It's a lot more common than most people think. First things first, what even is magnesium? It's one of the most important essential minerals in our diet. That means we need to ingest it through food and the body cannot make it itself. Magnesium is involved in over 300 enzymes and reactions, which is why, like I said before, it's often referred to as the most important mineral out there. Examples where it acts as a cofactor include carbohydrate metabolism, muscle relaxation, and energy production, which is also why basically everyone with diabetes, muscle cramps, and chronic fatigue is magnesium deficient. In this video, I want to focus on the connection between magnesium deficiency and chronic fatigue. And for that, we need to talk about several things. Let's start off with magnesium's role in energy production. As you probably already know, cells turn the food we eat into energy. Macronutrients like carbs, fats, and sometimes even protein are ultimately used to make ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is the energy currency of the cell, and any good biochemistry textbook will tell you how it's synthesized in the mitochondria. What is often left out, though, is that ATP doesn't really function as a free molecule. It actually needs to bind to magnesium to become biologically active. So ATP should in fact always be viewed as a magnesium ATP complex. One of the key reasons for this is that magnesium stabilizes the negative charge of the triphosphate part in ATP. This makes the binding of ATP to enzymes easier. This also explains why a magnesium deficiency is so detrimental for your energy levels. Even if your ATP synthesis works fine, but your body lacks magnesium, it also lacks the ATP activation cofactor, so it can't really do anything with the ATP. A second critical aspect I want to look at is the influence magnesium has on your nervous system. Next to their energy problems, people with chronic fatigue usually also have an imbalance in their nervous system. I also dedicated an entire video to this topic, but you're basically faced with an overactivity of the sympathetic nervous system branch, so your fight or flight reflex. The body is stuck in alarm mode and cannot properly relax. A magnesium deficiency makes this even worse, because magnesium is needed to both calm your nervous system and to relax muscle tension. It calms the nervous system by blocking the action of adrenaline, so in that sense it's kind of a natural beta blocker, and it relaxes muscles by pushing calcium out of the muscle cell, which led the muscle to contract in the first place. So what I want you to understand is that a lack of magnesium makes sympathetic dominance worse, that's what we call the nervous system imbalance I mentioned earlier. And it can also lead to muscle cramps, muscle twitching, and an increase in anxiety and even depression, since you will have higher baseline levels of adrenaline. Now, how common is a magnesium deficiency? The RDA for adults in the US is 400 to 420 milligrams of magnesium per day for men, and 310 to 320 milligrams for women. But studies have shown that close to 50% of people in the US consume less than the recommended daily amount. This makes magnesium deficiency one of the most common nutrient deficiencies out there. The three main reasons for it are one, food processing. For example, refining grains removes up to 80% of magnesium. So for instance, 100 grams of whole wheat flour has close to 140 milligrams of magnesium, whereas the same amount of white flour only has 22 milligrams. Next, we have stress. When you're stressed, you basically pee out magnesium. And losing too much magnesium can lead to even higher levels of stress, continuing the vicious cycle. Just as a side note, caffeine and alcohol can accelerate the rate of magnesium excretion. So please don't use either as a way to reduce stress in your life. And third, we have exercise. Even though exercise is healthy, of course, it is still a form of stress for the body. One study found that intense exercise increased magnesium loss through sweat and urine by 10 to 20%, and many athletes are at a high risk for magnesium deficiency. Unfortunately, these deficiencies are often only spotted when it's already too late. 
and this has to do with bad testing. Most people will get a blood magnesium test, but only about 1% of your total body levels are found in the blood. 99% are found in your bones and soft tissue. And because the body always prioritizes blood over tissue, you can have normal levels in the blood, but still be deficient in the rest of your body. This makes it difficult to diagnose a magnesium deficiency only based on blood tests, and why I recommend hair testing. I go through the process in a different video step by step. Hair analysis also helps explain why people who are clearly magnesium deficient don't get better when they start supplementing magnesium. You see, the nutrients in your body need to be balanced against each other. For example, a very common side effect of magnesium supplementation is to get heart palpitations. In that case, what is probably happening is that the additional magnesium is throwing off other minerals and electrolytes that are low in your body. For example, sodium or calcium, sometimes even potassium. A properly done hair analysis will help you spot these imbalances and see the big picture. What I'm trying to say is that even though magnesium is basically always involved in chronic fatigue, to fix the deficiency, you still need to look at your other vital minerals and bring them back into balance. I walk you through the process step by step in my recovery program and my other videos here on YouTube. I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one.